Good morning everyone and welcome back to the vlogs. This is a very, very exciting time of year for me because when you're watching this video, it will be the 31st of August, which means tomorrow is the 1st of December. And for me, that signifies the start of autumn, really. I know we obviously have um, the autumn equinox, but for me, I really like to build up to autumn. I find the transitionary months probably the most exciting of all. They're usually the most colorful. Um, you, you usually see the most spectacular seasonal views like the skies and nature. And so autumn and spring for me are always very, very exciting because autumn is like the build up to winter and spring is the build up to summer. And from the 1st of September, it really feels like I get my head into the season ahead and you start seeing the small signs of that season sort of creeping in. And on my dog walk, oh my gosh, there's the berries, the leaves, the views, everything sort of feels a little bit cosier. And at the moment, the weather is bizarrely autumnal already. I actually looked back and August and September last year were very, very hot. If you remember, we actually had the wildfires on the farmer's fields where we live and it was quite dramatic. And then I got COVID and then all of this other stuff happened and it was, it was a lot. Um, but this year, the weather's been different. And I, I, we were talking about this yesterday and I don't necessarily feel like I've not had a summer. I feel like it's just been a different summer. And whilst it hasn't necessarily lent itself well to like outside entertaining as such, I feel like we've had a really different experience this last sort of summer. And I, I'm actually, it's been, it's almost been like a cozy summer and I feel like you can never have too much cozy vibes in your life, in my humble opinion. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, just to let you know that basically every month we have a closing the chapter over on my blog. And then on the first of the month, we have the opening of the chapter. If you don't know, um, around two years ago, I started treating my, my life like a book. And it's probably where my book Evergreen sort of materialized from, but um, every month to me is a chapter and it's really helped me to, to view life differently and pick out all of those wonderful moments that each month has to offer because I see my life more structured. It might be a weird thing, you might relate, I don't know. But for the most part, it seems like everyone has really enjoyed it. So if you want to see the closing the chapter, um, I'll pop a link in the description box down below where you can head over to my blog and read that because it basically has like a bit of a roundup of everything that I've featured in the last month. It's really sort of holistic and you can see everything. And if you're ever wondering, oh, what was that thing that Lydia showed here? It's usually over on the closing the chapter. So just as a little bit of a, um, an update, it's there. Also the opening the chapter, which will be tomorrow if you're watching this the night this goes live. So the opening of the chapter usually, it usually involves a really lovely poem that um, signifies everything to be excited for, to lean into for the month ahead. It's really funny because when we first started doing them, we all work on it as a team. It's all very much like the Lydia Millen team that works on this. And people were worried that they weren't, you know, they weren't getting the likes that everything else gets. But what this does, I've never seen anything quite like the shares that this gets. And that for me, it may not provide huge amounts of growth. It may not provide huge amounts of engagement in a numerical sense that you see on my page. But my goodness, to see that you love something that we work on enough to share it, that's what it's all about for me. So that will be going live on the 1st of September. So it's also, it's on my Instagram, but it's also on the blog. So you can check it out in both sections. So I thought I'd just let you know, because I feel like I don't really talk about it that much on here because I'm trying now moving forward to be a little bit more in line with the rest of the team. I've always been quite free spirited with the approach to my, my vlogs. And with this new focus that I'm taking on in terms of like really wanting to add a bit more value, I am, um, 
we're sort of sitting down and brainstorming a little bit in terms of like what's going to be in the vlogs and what types of content that we're going to be covering so that it feels like you're getting something rather than just watching me live my life all the time very very personal thing and that's just the the approach that i'm having basically i've got my hair up um because i currently have a lot of oil on my hair and also the three more inches like treatment pre-wash treatment so i just pop it up in, the, in a bun because it's easier and i just thought give my hair a little bit of nourishment so this is my hair for the day i'm also wearing my usual when the seasons are like this my usual beaufort and blake shirt and the new holland cooper country fleece so you'll remember i had all of the gilets of this um in spring i pretty much lived in them it's so cold today that i couldn't wear my gilet so i've gone for the full fleece and this is a staple same attributes as the uh gilet fits beautifully it's like really almost like a tailored fleece you feel really put together in it and smart while still being super cozy because you can't go wrong with fleece so it's gonna be a really good one for the month ahead mentioning Beaufort and Blake by the way just as a heads up I have their autumn winter collection in my cupboard as we speak I didn't know it had arrived because it arrived yesterday when I was out of the office and I opened up to put one of my shirts on this morning and I was like oh my gosh I got so excited and I really wanted to wear all of it right now because it feels so much like autumn at the moment. But I have to leave it because I'm going to show you it all together. But what I wanted to do in this video was a little bit of autumn preparation, whether that's in the house, whether that's in my wardrobe. One of the main things that I want to do is to pick out the items from um, my wardrobe that I wore this time last year throughout winter. It will probably mainly be focused on like knitwear and day-to-day -day pieces rather than my coats. I'm keeping my coats stored away at the moment so that it frees up everything else, but I'm gonna do the big coat bring down from the loft um, as soon as I get the opportunity. So I'm just gonna go through the bits of my wardrobe and just acknowledge what I've already got, items that I loved last year and um, get them out on a rail and show you them. And I think that this will be a really good one for just everyday pieces, but also if those items are back in stock, which I've seen one of the one of my favorite dresses from last year, I believe is back in stock on House of Brewer. So um, yeah, really good, just to remind myself of what I have and what I don't need to buy. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Then a little bit of house prep as well, I think. Autumn decorating isn't starting until later on in the month. Um, but I do have a really exciting video coming next because um, I'm hosting a little something and I think it'll be lovely for you to see that. So anyway, that's where we're at basically. And um, it's, it's Saturday of the bank holiday weekend and I, I've realized I've got this thing about myself where I like, I sit here and it, I've got like this whole day and I'm like, I can do anything with this day. And I get so overwhelmed that I do nothing. Please tell me I'm not the only person that is like that. I'm like, I want to go antique shopping. I want to go to the, the garden center. I want to do this. I want to do that. And it, I end up doing nothing. And it's really frustrating because I feel like I never do anything that I want to do. But anyway, let's crack on and start pulling some bits out. And hopefully I'll be able to tuck myself up to do something else. The other thing that I've ticked off my list, by the way, is um, I have finally treated myself to some labels for my chutney jars. Um, there was a lady that actually designed some produce labels for us. She just reached out to us on a whim and her designs were absolutely beautiful. And we've like expanded on them now and I've paid her to, to put them into motion. And that's, that's gonna go onto our chutney jars this year. So that's something that I can tick off my list. I need to make sure I've got enough chutney jars um, for the gifts and make sure that I've got everything that I'm gonna need in order to make it because chutney is a big thing that I gift over um, the next few months. I love being able to go to someone's house and gift them a jar of chutney. That's something that I'm really happy to say I have found. You can buy chutney labels on places like Etsy, on Amazon. Um, Carrie got some really good ones which I would have bought but um, they didn't have them anymore. So I thought it was probably a good, good idea to turn one of these labels into like a self-filling produce label. So anyway, let's grab a rail, let's delve into the cupboards and let's remind ourselves of all of the lovely autumnal pieces that we already have in our wardrobe. Now, 
think that could be a good location. I think I'm going to grab out the one piece that I've been so excited in, the one that I referenced before. This dress from House of Brewer is one of those items that I bought and I didn't quite realise how much I was going to love this and I know that everyone went nuts for this dress. It's super versatile so it's one of those 100% wool um, shirt dresses. I think the fabric of this is almost like a tweed, a tweed jacket. It is incredible. Midi length, it's got its own belt. But the reason I loved this is that first of all, it was warm. You can layer underneath it. You can add blazers. You can add knitwear. It's the perfect autumnal layering piece, but also the colour is just spectacular. The colour and the, the fabric, phenomenal. So that's definitely, definitely being dug out. This is my um, like dark wear dresses and things like that. So I'm going to go for, I mean, the possibilities are endless here. But what I want to do is go with my most wearable pieces more than anything. So I'm definitely going to dig out this dress as well. It probably needs a steam. But this is from my spring or summer? It was supposed, no, it was supposed to be in winter, but it ended up coming in spring, is that right? I get confused nowadays, there's been so many collections, but this was from a previous Karen Millen collection and it's beautiful. The ruching detail to the sleeves, the green color. I really, really like these muddier, deeper greens at this time of year, so this is brilliant. Um, also comes in white, which is just as versatile at this time of year. Oh, I am definitely digging this out, even though this is a, no, this is a new piece, so it's not from last year. Can I dig it out even though I've shown you it? I'm digging it out anyway. This is the Lily Silk um, Silk Trench. I know this is new, but this is going to be so beautiful, worn with brown tights, boots, a smart bag, a cashmere jumper underneath, as like a dress with a belt over the top. So I am gonna include this just because I'm super excited to wear it. So I think that's a good one. And it's classic black, that kind of thing. I'm also going to dig out my Susanna London two piece in the navy. As we get deeper into autumn, I think that this is going to be a really, really good piece. Like I, I've worn this so much and it was an expensive purchase. All of um, Susanna London's pieces are made in their atelier. They're, you know, designed to perfection, crafted to perfection, and she's just incredible at what she does. And this is such a worthwhile purchase, not just the jacket on its own, but the skirt. I've probably worn the skirt the most, to be honest. I wore it even in spring, summer. And the structure, it's gorgeous. It's one of those classic, classic feminine suiting options. And I think I'll wear this a lot um, when it comes to like events and things like that. So that's definitely being dug out and that will definitely take me into autumn. I feel like this one is a no brainer. This is the Amazon shirt dress. So there really is something for everyone. The Amazon shirt dress, I have this in black, I have this in white. All colors work well for autumn, but navy for me is really, really good. It's really versatile because you can wear it in spring, summer, autumn, winter. And um, this is just a great casual one. You'll probably see me wear this a lot around the house. So I think that's a good one as well. The other items, which are currently in storage, so I can't dig them out, but you will see them in coming months, are my cashmere dresses from Amazon. Carrying on from that, I have them in pretty much every color. They are the perfect, perfect layering piece. So, so good for sticking under beautiful coats all of those kinds of things. So um, if you don't remember those, I'll link them down below. If I have any shots or videos, I'll pop them on screen just so you can see them. Now this is my colorful printed wardrobe. So I feel like this one may not, there may not be as many pieces in here, but for definite, and this dress is a bit Marmite for people, but I love this dress so much. This is again, another Susanna London piece. This is 100% silk, such, such a gorgeous skirt. Oh my goodness and really easy to dress up and dress down. I love it. And the colors lend well to, to so many seasons. So yeah, I'm gonna dig that out as well. And then I'm gonna dig out my Carolina Herrera shirt dress. I think that this is super, super special for the autumn months. I think that color is gorgeous. Um, this old, old dress from uh, Anna Mason. 
This again is the perfect autumnal dress. And whilst I'm not necessarily doing like super, super floral prints at the moment, I'm going more, a bit more pared back. I feel like this, you just can't go wrong with this in autumn. Those sort of faded vintage florals are just spectacular. So those definitely, and definitely this dress. This is such a great spring and autumnal dress. This is from Erdem. Lovely sprigs, lots of beautiful embroidery, and it's this oatmeal um, fabric, this sort of really, really rustic linen that they've got. I think that this will definitely be worn in autumn. I've actually found that it's more of a wintry dress for me personally. And then when it comes to white dresses, I have to be honest, there's not too many other than these two that you'll see me wear. This is very much a late summer, early autumn dress in my opinion. I wore this in Provence. It's a classic. I may even wear this to Salon Privé, I haven't decided yet, um, with a hat and beautiful shoes. And then this is the fern print Erdem dress with the long sleeves. Linen, beautiful for spring, summer, but also autumn. And I think that that's a good one. So those are dresses. These are, these are just items that off the top of my head, I'm like definitely going to get worn at this time of year. Um, I'm gonna get some of my blazers now. Okay, these three jackets and blazers are definite yeses. This is one of my um, Seuster and Hicks blazers. This looks like vintage Celine to me. I might get a Celine brooch and pop this on there. Um, but this is just so gorgeous. The richness, there's little bits of navy in there. There's um, those deep kind of Merlot shades all on that biscuit, dark biscuit base. Um, gold buttons, just spectacular. Then we have this one, which actually, do you know what? I've not actually worn that much, but I feel like this coming season, I wanna get a bit more wear out of this. This is from Cordings, and it's got this gorgeous velvet uh, collar. Now it's very narrow on the shoulders, but I think worn draped over the, like a dress or something like that, this will be really good. And then of course, my other Seuster and Hicks with the pink, the pink running through, I think this is just one of my favorites um, of all time. And finally, from the blazers, I would say, just that's really jumping out at me as classics, this Holland Cooper Knightsbridge blazer. This is their sort of more fitted, structured style. And then we have, I believe this is, is the Paddington blazer as well. Um, this is more of like a, let me pop this one down here. This definitely has more of a um, casual feel to it. I love the colors on this. It's got those more mossy greens, the mossy suede patch, just brilliant in terms of like adding a bit of color and a bit of shape to your wardrobe like this over a, a sort of ivory dress, beautiful. What I might do with you today is just get out some key pieces, things that I'm probably gonna wear the most. So I'm gonna get some boots and yeah, pick out some of my favorite boots, I think. Boots selection number one, and probably a pair of my favorite boots of all time. These are from Ray Pavon, which Ray Pavon is a Spanish leather and country wear brand. Now the red of these boots match, matches perfectly to one of my vintage bags, and you are going to see me wearing a very select few bags the next season, because I've really whittled it down. Um, but these are brilliant, comfortable, they fit your legs nicely, and beautifully made as well. You'll recognize the red soles. <laughs> I've had these boots for, I think we're heading towards three or, I think four years now. If anyone creates a more classic, flattering silhouette for a boot, um, I'll probably end up buying it. But so far, nothing has topped these boots and yes they are expensive for boots these are well into the four figures but the amount that i wear these it's ridiculous i'm doing them no justice but i have them in a multitude of colors these are either the eloise or the kate boots I sort of changed the name and a little bit of the the tips but these are the more pointed boots from le Boutin. and these are black suede i also have them in the black leather I probably wear the black leather the most, I'd say, because 
they go with black leather bags. They basically, what makes them so good um, is they have this little hidden panel on the inside here that uh, is elasticated. So they fit your leg really, really well and the ankles are super fitted. Now I can imagine that they don't have enough calf sizes, so I'm sure they don't fit everyone. But there are brands out there that do different calf sizes and do boots that are super, super flattering as well and maybe even a bit more practical, just as an FYI. And I also have them in the chocolate. Now I've worn these for pretty much every single Karen Miller collection I've ever done because they're paired back, they're understated, they do the job. And um, the reason why I have these colours is I have bags that match all, all of them basically. So this one goes with my little Louis bags and then my um, Kelly's match the black ones. So these are, you're just going to see them worn all the time. But I do intend on wearing ballet flats in the autumn time. So what I want to do is have a pair of the Lulu flats and the Josie's colour matched to my vintage Kelly, the red, the, the Rouge Hermes vintage Kelly that I have, because I definitely, definitely want to wear more flats with, with that particular uh, bag. And I've got obviously my boots, but they're very, very casual. I want something that I can dress, dress up with it. So I'm gonna to speak to the Emmy London team about getting that um, colour matched. So that's a bit of footwear. Let's talk about bags because I have, I believe, one, two, three. I have less than 10 designer handbags left in my collection. And some people seem really upset that I wear the same bags pretty much every day. And I do swap them around a little bit, but basically my bags come seasonally with me. And I, I'm, I'll put some bags into storage when we change into autumn and I'll have other bags that come out of storage and I really think that that's how it should be. I think that we've got so bizarrely, and I did too, like I'm, I'm telling myself off for this as well, but we've got so bizarrely used to seeing like new bags all the time and I do get new bags every now and again but like this is my collection that I cherish and I love and I wear. And I will sometimes show you new bags, uh, maybe new bags by brands that I love, but this is my, you know what my core collection is. And this is it now, I've whittled it down, I don't need to keep on adding to it. And the majority of these bags have been carefully selected so that I don't feel I need a new bag for every outfit. And I know when people say to me, oh Lydia, like in my previous vlog, people were like, Lydia, you look so lovely in red. And what I'm doing at the moment is, to, is trying to identify the best colour bag, which I think is going to be like a white ivory, that I can bring into my collection that I can wear with colour in that way. Because there are certain colours that will be complemented by black, certain colours that will be complemented by the brown, if you think like the ivories, um, the blues, things like that. But to get the most versatility out of my wardrobe, I definitely think that there is a colour, like an ivory or something like that, so that when I'm wearing my Oscar de la Renta dress or a red dress, that an ivory can complement without it matching. Because that's the problem with, that I find with colour, is that if I start wearing red, if I start wearing yellow, if I start wearing all of these other things, there's only certain colours that will work with it unless you go matchy-matchy and I don't want to do that because then you get into the realm of lots of coloured bags. It's like with my green Dior bag. That's such a specific shade of green that what's actually better is if I find a green dress that I find a universal colour that complements it, like an ivory, etc, etc. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. So this is really great because these colours work super well in... Um, summer, spring, autumn and winter, but I generally tend to gravitate more to the blacks. Sadly though, I don't have my blacks in the house. Um, I will wait until I switch out my wardrobes and etc etc, but I do have my vintage. And um, this is the vintage Kelly that will be so gorgeous in autumn, winter. And again, this is a 
colour that I looked at really specifically in terms of complementing blacks, blues, ivories, that kind of thing. It's not bright red, it's that more muted red and it's super big as well, it's a really great work bag. I just I absolutely love it, it's so, so gorgeous. If you're wanting to see new bags, different bags, this is definitely not the channel that you're going to want to watch. But if you like someone that gets the wear out of their items, that really loves them and shows the versatility, I might be your girl. Another item I'm grabbing, which is a firm favourite, I have a few floor length cardigans, but this is by far my most worn. This is from Philo Sophie, that's it I think. I don't know if they've done this again, but Loop Cashmere does a very, very similar option. It doesn't have the more relaxed sleeves, and I don't think it has the more um, relaxed collar, but if you oversize it just a little bit, you still get that same feel. This is so gorgeous for over long dresses. I love traveling with it because it keeps me cozy and warm, and I think it looks nice as well, and you can belt it, you can leave it to hang, and it's just a really, really great color, in my humble opinion. Um, for your wardrobe. So yes, those are a few key pieces. Now I'm probably going to get into basics and more country wear in another video, otherwise this will be a hundred years long. But I just wanted to identify a few bits and pieces that um, I'm 110% going to be re-wearing next year. Next year? This year. Uh, but things like my Beaufort and Blake shirts, like this classic white, works super well. But I've also got tartan ones but I just can't wait to show you the ones that they've got for this season and they've also done a new jumper if you remember my sheep jumper that went a bit nuts like I had people literally trying to buy it off me they have a new jumper coming this year which I cannot wait to see the moment they said it I was like I need that and I need that very very quickly so um yes just a few notable items from my wardrobe that I'm super excited to wear this season. It's the tones for me as well. I feel like I've got really good options. Like it's not like it's all white and black and whatever. We've still got touches of color, navy, orange, green, little touches of those more statement colors as well. Oh, so good. Now I have had one new in set arrive for autumn. So the first sort of item that I've bought for autumn which actually is an investment piece from Purdy. It takes so many of my more conscious boxes that I definitely felt like I could justify this one. First of all, it's beautiful materials. So I believe it's 100% cashmere. Like I said, it's expensive. Purdy is a high-end country brand and their pieces do tend to retail for a lot higher. But this is 100% cashmere and that's obviously one big tick. Then. It's got this cable detailing, which is super classic and the color super in line with the seasons and the colors outside during autumn, winter, that deep, mossy, rich green, which I just, just love. The other thing that I really loved about this is that it's a two piece. So I got the cardigan as well as the skirt. So I can wear it like this with a shirt. I'm sure I could add like a vintage belt or something like that. Maybe a black one for winter, who knows? Maybe, maybe this is too sort of fashionable for it. It needs to be a bit more of like a traditional belt. But yeah, I loved this idea of like being able to wear this warm skirt, tights, boots, classic black bag, but also um, with the cardigan, which you can kind of like drape over the top like that or what you can do is you can remove the skirt you don't want it to look too school teachery kind of vibes but if you remove if you remove the shirt and add a belt it kind of almost looks like a jumper dress in this color as well which again i loved works super well with my vintage bag as well those colors are just so exquisite so it's a really versatile color in my wardrobe warm elegant timeless good materials beautiful craftsmanship and just useful because I've got the cardigan which I can use over white dresses and then the skirt which I can wear with either roll necks or shirts and super super versatile so this felt like a really good piece to add into my wardrobe when I saw it like I said this was an investment so I had to make sure that it actually felt justifiable and the fact that it ticked so many boxes just sealed the deal for me so I'll link it down below Purdy's a beautiful brand British heritage has such wonderful history and the craftsmanship that they put into everything is 
exceptional. So definitely worth checking out their field coats. Their two pieces like this, I really feel like they're about to up their game with their women's wear as well, which is super exciting. I've quickly styled it up with the cardigan um, as kind of like a dress. This vintage belt works perfectly to sort of bridge the gap between the two items and makes this super, super cool. Oh my gosh, I feel amazing in this and it's so comfortable. Love, can't wait for like, being able to wear this because it's definitely too warm. <laughs> well, I really feel like we are getting into the swing of things when it comes to the chickens laying. And yesterday we had our first brown speckled egg. Now I'm guessing that um, Gwyneth laid this because it's small, just like snowdrops. Um, and obviously they're a little bit younger. So I'm thinking that potentially that's who laid it. But the only thing I'm realising is that Beatrix is currently in the coop. So I think I might head down to the chicken coop and just check on them, see if she's laid anything. Because I don't know if Beatrix has ever laid anything. Um, but yes, we're building up a bit of a collection of eggs. I'm actually saving them at the moment because I'm making scrambled eggs for the girls for our brilliant breakfast next week. And I wanted to make it using the hen's eggs. So that is a bit of progress, but let's head down to the coop to check on Beatrix. I definitely think that this was Beatrix because it's not speckled like the other one. So I think the other one, um, the speckled one is definitely coming from Gwyneth. Um, Beatrix did lay, I think, early on and then she stopped and very, very happy to see her laying. I'm going to take this one inside. There's actually two eggs, one from Jemima and one from Beatrix. But yesterday we obviously had uh, one from Snowdrop, one from Gwyneth and one from Jemima and I want to get a picture of all the eggs in the um, coop. <laughs> what I forgot to say with this is that this is actually our first, I think it's our first, although I, no, I think that Beatrix did lay a couple in the first few days because we did get, we did get a couple of brown ones, but these are our Burford browns because um, Beatrix is a Burford brown hen. So those are actually the eggs that we usually buy from the shops. And this is our first one. So, well, no, it's not our first one, but it's the one that I can properly remember because it was quite hectic in the beginning and we were just trying to get them settled. But yeah, Burford Brown. Well, it smells absolutely spectacular in here, but it is freezing outside today. Oh my goodness. So this is much needed. I've just lit the fire myself because my gosh, it was cold. Um, we're cooking up a storm in the kitchen. Ali and I just um, researched some recipes and we've done a new courgette recipe and we've done some of my purple French beans and a potato sort of cooked salad. And I've also just bookmarked, basically created a little folder on my home screen for recipes to make with the things that I grow from my kitchen garden and um, I label them with the vegetable and then the recipe and this one I found is a uh, French bean mac and cheese so I've got definitely got enough uh, beans that I'm going to harvest tomorrow so I might try and make it tomorrow but tonight we're doing uh, potatoes and beans as like a salad we've got some um, batten courgettes which have been um, marinated by Ali we've got chicken one of the other things I've done is gone through the kitchen I want to do a big pantry restock and I also want to um, I've basically gone through our crockery because 
What I've realized is our dinner plates are actually serving plates. They are 30 centimeters. And I don't know if you've ever seen when Ali does um, our roast dinners, but they are piled high. And I think it's not a good thing in terms of portion size. So what I'm gonna do is um, just order the next size. No, it's, I think it's two sizes down. We can't get the 26 um, centimeter, which is actually probably a normal um, dinner plate. So we've got to go to the 21, but I think it'll be fine. And we've also lost rather a lot of our mugs. Do you remember we had um, loads of those beautiful, beautiful mugs from every story? And I'm so sad to say that they haven't really they haven't really lasted. We've only got about four left. And what we found was a lot of them, um, their handles came off. And so I think what we're gonna do is, we've also lost some of our Sophia ceramics as well, which is um, a ceramicist in London, which is our main dinner set is from. And so we're gonna replace some of those and then um, just make do with the, the mugs that we've got now. But just doing a big kitchen sort through at the moment. And um, also we need new pans. And this is something where I'm in a little bit of a dilemma because I was just gonna go and replace them with a load of Le Creuset. But I think that's the best option. We have one Le Creuset um, casserole dish and it is, it's like bomb proof. And everything else just tends to flake and break and it's just then never any good. So I think what I'm gonna do is order a skillet from Le Creuset and then some smaller casserole pans and use those, not pans, but pots, and use those as like saucepans because they're just so good and they're re they really withstand things. So I think I'm gonna do that as well. Just have a bit of a restock of the kitchen, then go through the pantry and um, yeah. But for now, we are going to curl up in front of this roaring and crackling fire until dinner is ready. Good morning everyone. Um, it is now Sunday and we are about to head to Waitrose because we are hosting some of our friends this evening. We've got our friends Pippa, Jez, Lumbe and Josh coming over and we've already planned all of the food that we're going to do so I also need to dress the table a little bit. I've planned all of the dishes as well. The boys are going to fire up the big green egg and use the smoker. We're going to do some uh, pizzas like some garlic pizza bread in the pizza oven and I'm gonna do my first ever tomato and mozzarella salad with my own tomatoes that I am going to eat with like balsamic glaze, olive oil, salt, basil, that kind of thing. I'm gonna do potatoes and my purple French beans in sort of like a boiled, herby, buttery, salady thing. And then on our walk this morning, uh, we foraged some blackberries from the hedgerows and obviously we have them in our garden as well but I had taken all that we could get from that and so I thought I'd get some fresh ones for today and we're going to do meringues with cream and blackberries on them for dessert something super easy but really tasty as well I don't think I'm going to make the, the meringues I obviously should because I now have eggs but I need to learn how to make the meringues and I know they're super easy but I don't think that today is the day to be testing anything. We have cake on the cake stand, so that's good. Oh, and also, by um, digging out that dress from my wardrobe yesterday, I was like, do you know what, it's miserable. And this is a warm shirt dress, it means I get to be comfortable and smart, but warmer because it's wool. So I popped it on and I don't care. I've done it with my uh, vintage belt as well. Um, my hair, I washed because yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday you would have seen I had, um, rosemary oil and the three more inches on my hair in a bun. And when I tell you that if you have thick, dry, coarse hair like I have, that is my secret weapon because my, my hair literally drinks it up. I can feel the weight return to the ends of my hair and it's just a lot softer, a lot smoother. It's a super, super helpful, like nourishing treatment. And then I've popped the three minute oil on the ends now with the little balm. Uh, I've washed my hair with the hair burst 
for longer, stronger lengths. I need to get the curly whirly one better because I need to get the curly whirly one again because that's actually better for my scalp. And then I used a mask, which was the Kerastase um, resistance mask. So yeah, my hair just responds well to super like nourishing um, products and still keeps the color. So all good. Good morning, Monsieur. Oh my gosh, we are matching in our colors. What a surprise. Guess what color we're matching in? Green, our favorite. I right. Oh wow. Yeah. Very smart. I love that Purdy Gilo. That was such a great find. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. I'm gonna brush my teeth and we can go. We've done a smash and grab at Waitrose, but I think we've got a good amount of stuff. We are to the wire now, but we should, I think if I get home and get the easy stuff done first, and then it'll be fine. All the cold stuff, get that done so it can just be ready and um, good to go. The weather has turned a little bit, um, so it's not going to be an enjoyable harvest today, but needs must for our friends. <laughs> So I am throwing a tablescape together with these orange chrysanthemums that I got. Not my favorite flower, but it was all they had and we didn't have time to go to the garden center. So I've used this washed linen uh, tablecloth as a runner. Laying the table, haven't decided on napkins just yet, but that's gonna have to do. Cakes on the table, um, candles, and then my playlist, I'm gonna do a sort of modern jazz playlist if I can find where my... I heard this song being played when I was at Le Manoir and I found the entire playlist and I really like her jazz. So I'm going to pop that on the Sonos. Light some candles. Madeline Peru. The best of, let's go with that one. Shuffle, play. I think I wear a quick spritz. I usually use the, um, the other one, but they only have this one for breeze, so I'm gonna go with this. So, the first very easy dish that I am preparing is mozzarella and tomatoes. Super easy. Now I know that you should never really slice mozzarella. It's sacrilege. However, I just feel like it's gonna look a little bit better for this particular dish. So I'm gonna slice it into thin slices and just spread it on the, on the tray. And I like all of my crockery to be quite mismatched, but also still complement each other. And so I've got like little bits of crockery from Bordello, then I've got some more independent ceramicists, some bits from places that I've traveled, like time and things like that, just because I like it to look a little bit less um, put together. And the item that, oh gosh, this knife is so sharp. The item that I'm using to display this on is from uh, Every Story, which are the mugs that we used to have. So I'm just gonna pop the mozzarella like this, not like uniformed in any way, shape or form, but just spread out on the tray like that. I'm gonna to need to run down and grab, ooh, grab some basil or basil, as the Americans would say. Then I've got the tomatoes that I have just picked. I've given them a wash. I think I'm going to half them. Do I half them? No, I'm gonna do them in littler ones because there's not loads of them. And so I feel like little sporadic halves of tomatoes means people can enjoy it just a little bit better, a little bit easier. And I just nestle them around. To be fair, I might have a good amount of tomatoes here, which is good. 
half, then quarter. This is like the simplest thing. Oh, this smells so good. Never did I think I would say that about a tomato. Okay, I'm gonna drizzle a bit of oil. Ooh, that's a lot of oil. What's the point in having a pour if you're, if it's just like pouring. Et voila. Salt. A little bit of glaze. Not too heavy. Et voila, that is the first dish ready. Super simple, super easy. Uh, I'm gonna cut some bread as well so that they can enjoy the tomatoes with the mozzarella, the bread. Oh, so good. So this is a very, very interesting turn of events because I've just steamed my purple beans and I had no idea that they were gonna go green. So I opened it up and I was like, oh, nice. But we should be ready to take this off now. We have just had a change of playlist and Philippa has let us know about a very good playlist which is called, if I can find it, Cottage in the English Countryside, which is on Spotify. And she says that when she listens to this in the morning, it's usually gonna give her a good day. So there's things like Bridgerton, Pride and Prejudice, that kind of thing, but very uplifting and positive. And I thought that's gonna be right up my street. Well, it's definitely not warm today, but we do have the fire out here, which is keeping us much more cozy. And everything is just looking so lovely. We've got the big green egg on and the pizza oven. And I've just been showing Jez and Pippa the chickens for the first time and he's lighting the little hurricane jars and sadly too cold to eat outdoors today but as mentioned we had our sink taken away but it's coming back next week and we've got a huge rack of ribs in the big green egg enough for like 10 people and then we're going to be having some garlic breads from the pizza oven as well so really really lovely and a wonderful sunny evening that we've been blessed with as well. I'm loving the soundtrack that uh, Philip has suggested. It's so perfect. I love it when I'm with like kindred spirits and they, they <laughs> like the same types of music as me. What, what are you saying? I said, why did you upgrade this car to my fridge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just think it. You open and I'll crack it back. I've only got one job. It's an easy one. Is that pizza okay in there? Huh? Yeah, you watch that. No, that's burning, my love. No, it's fine. It's oh, okay. okay. It's a quick one, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. So we've got the... Pizzas, yeah, I do, I do. I'll film, I'll film. Are you burping it? <laughs> <laughs> You're such silly <laughs> boys. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, the smoker is about to finish and we are laying the table. So, we've got some fresh sourdough, the mozzarella that I made earlier, and then the potatoes and purple beans that are now green, um, the tomatoes on the pizza breads oh my gosh they were so so good so i'm really looking forward to having some of this but just waiting for the meats now Good morning everyone. We have all woken up, probably don't look it, but bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and we're off to farmhouse for a swim with our friends Jez and Pippa who live quite close to farmhouse. 
So we're going to go for a swim, have maybe a late lunch, early dinner, and just chill there for the day because it's looking like it's going to be quite a nice day. So I'm going to pack my bag. I've already started packing my little Holland Cooper canvas bag, which I use for farmhouse. So I've got all of my little bits in. I've got the um, Thayer's Facial Mist, Arden Ceramide. They're retinol and HPR. Oh my gosh. Like... It is honestly, it has become probably one of those things that I'm like, I crave to put on at night. It is retinol for everyone. Like everyone can use it. So that's become my moisturizer that I use after my skin and me because the double whammy of the two, like I don't have a single blemish at the moment. My skin is the best it has been in such a long time. And oh, so anyway, I take all of these bits with me, not because I haven't done it already. I've also got my Shantakai face wash lano etc um i take these bits with me just in case because i hate being caught out when i'm there um, i'm going to pop a little bit of like mineral makeup on because we're going in the pool and we don't know if we're going in the sauna so i'll wash my face if i'm there as well i have a swimsuit that i may take with me which is from the brand Everay, and i wish i'd found this at the beginning of the summer it's bando which is always my favorite style of swimsuit um, but it's got this cute little ruffle on the front. I tried this on when I went to um, my Claire Mishavani uh, fitting the other day, and oh my gosh, there's so many items that I wanted. But I'm, this, this actually isn't in my in my size, but I felt like I could make it work because this is an eight, and they didn't have any sixes, and I just went with the flow. So I'm going to try this on, see if this fits, and yeah, go. Just to show you it a little bit on, um, it's sort of this like ivory style and I thought I would pop it with my Hermes uh, sarong which I got in the green and navy and kind of ivory as well but it fits really really beautifully and it's actually super secure comfortable not too high leg as well like it's got really good bum coverage very very happy with this yeah definitely taking this one one thing I didn't get to show you last night was my beautiful gift from Philippa she actually hand painted me these candles herself it's her new hobby and um she did little hearts on them one of them even looked like a chicken we um established so we instead of like cluttering up the table i popped them in the flower pots and i have to say it's quite effective um and i'm actually a bit happier with how these little pots turned out because it was a make do with what there was at waitrose and i think that this color combination gave that sort of end of summer feel to it without it being too autumnal just yet uh, but we are up and ready to head to farmhouse unfortunately mr millie gordon is lagging behind philippa and jez have already left but they've got to go to their house first pick up some bits and then we're gonna head there